I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see So we came here to see exactly what is the state with, in which they are they, they are taken care of, and it's one of the examples that we are using as a department working together with the province as well as the local government to assist people so that they are in a safe place. Here they are in a safe place. They are also supported by the churches. They are supported by... Excuse me, I need to take this thing But you need to keep this far, obviously. Yeah. So we are here with the MEC, uh, uh, as well as uh, the mayor, um, just to take a look at uh, how they are keeping the homeless. The people who are here were the ones who were rounded up uh, from the streets so that they can also be safe uh, from infection. They can also just have a, a better shelter. We also, fortunately, we got a lot of support from the churches, we got support from NPOs, we got support from NGOs that are here. As you can see, the blankets, I'm told, the blankets were donated um, uh, by uh, All Mutual. Uh, this, and I also went into the storeroom where I found a food that has been donated by the community around here. Um, you know, the people who are here are also citizens of the country. The people who are here are here for one reason or the other. Uh, they've had challenges in their lives one way or the other. I think what is important is what the province as well as the local government are doing uh, to take them out of that pain because they, they really are going through pain. Some of them are people who, who abuse drugs and therefore the Department of Social Development at a provincial level and the local structures have got doctors who come here to come and help. They've got um, social workers who come here and do the, the, the assessment. But also there's a clinic here, which is just a clinic uh, close by. So we wish to thank the church, we wish to thank uh, those that enabled us as a government to use the community hall uh, to keep them here. Uh, the province as well as national, we bought the blankets and the mattresses just to keep them here. But obviously this is a short term plan. The long term plan is to do everything we can to get them back into a normal life like everybody else. And I've been told that some of them have already been 
uh, uh, taken back to their families and uh, I'm hoping that the social workers in the process will continue to monitor them uh, even when they are in their own homes because I think the people at home also get scared. So we've got to carry this together. It's, it's a big challenge. Uh, one of the challenges we're going to have is sustaining this because it's got to be sustainable. We've got to make sure that uh, where do we get the money. We have to prioritize some of our budgets and all. Uh, we, I would like to see many of them post-COVID being back to their communities, being back to their families. That would be the best we can do. So are they maybe, is government looking to train the um, uh, 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 Rounded up these people and brought them into centers. The provinces all in all are trying to connect to technicons, to connect to, um, to get a skill so that they can take care of themselves. Basically it will be better for them, all of them, to, to get some skill so that they can be employed. But at the same time right now we all know that jobs are very difficult, people are already losing their jobs. Uh, but we have hope. We came here because we need to give South Africans hope. Um, we can't throw our hands in the air. We've got to be able to work with each other and utilize this opportunity because I think that um, COVID-19 has exposed a lot of weaknesses in our systems, in society, uh, in government, everywhere. We, this is an opportunity that will not come back again. So we need to try and see how can we quickly implement. And the MEC and the mayor will tell you that uh, we work extra hours. Uh, we are we are hardly sleeping because we want to make sure that our citizens are taken. But government taking care of citizens, it's about citizens also taking care of themselves. It's about citizens looking at what is happening around them and beginning to say what can they also do for themselves. Government must create a conducive environment, uh, but citizens need to also take responsibility. Even the people who are here. We are not going to treat them like they are, they are brainless, they are head, headless, they are, mm. they are not. They are people mm. who you can talk to and you can see that you can to, talk to them mm. and reason with them. So when we say we must create a conducive environment, it's about helping them get out of mm. this painful mm. uh, situation they are in. Mm. I don't think anybody wants to be in the streets. Mm. I don't think anybody wants not to have food. I don't think anybody want not to have a home. So it's our responsibility to work. But my plea is that the MEC, the mayor, and everyone in government, I'm saying while we are doing what we can, we need to also empower people so that they can be powered to do things for themselves. This time, it's very clear to us that uh, we can work together. In fact, I was saying the food that we see being uh, distributed here, I don't know how long that food is going to last. I don't know how long people are going to be opening up their hearts. Uh, there's so much food in South Africa. The President Senator Maposa has said to us long before COVID came that we have to work towards ensuring that um, uh, no one goes hungry. And this is the time when the entire nation can see how many of our people are going hungry a day. What we are doing now, it must be developmental, it must be sustainable, it must be empowering to people. Thank you. I must say, I think it's the third time uh, for me to visit uh, this shelter. I went to visit them when they were on the other side of the church there and uh, constantly they report to me about whatever steps that they want to take because for us to remove the shelter from that side it's because it's winter now and uh, uh, the temporary shelters were becoming cold that's why we had to move them here because uh, there's uh, enough space uh, that, uh, what air conditioners uh, the heaters and there's also a clinic just nearby here so we thought that this is a suitable uh, space so that they can be comfortable uh, they mustn't feel cold and you, you have seen that we also brought them blankets today we just want them to uh, 
uh, stay you know comfortable but at the same time uh, we need to reunify them with their families because this is just a temporary arrangement but they need to go back to their families but you will know that some of them are, are not keen to go back uh, so uh, we will see but some of them we just want to do an assessment of the, the drug abuse because we can take them to our center uh, uh, Kangala Treatment Center, there is space there. We've got 50 beds. At the moment, we've got about 50 uh, that are undergoing treatment. So they won't live here forever. So is there any visible uh, progress so far compared to your first visit? There is progress because you'll remember when they were at the stadium there, they were mainly, they were about almost close to 200, but the social workers also reunified some with the FMS. That's why you see the number is less, it's about 64. So, uh, and what is a good uh, thing, uh, it's when we reunify them with the FMS because it's one of our mandate as the Department of Social Development that we have to to, to take them out of the street, give them treatment. After that, let's see where do they come from. But some of them, they don't have um, IDs, which is a program that we're waiting for uh, Home Affairs to open their offices so that they can go, because they qualify to get the 350. So they must go to Home Affairs and do their uh, uh, fingerprints, get new IDs, so that they can apply for the fire. Now, the plan is that these people need to be reintegrated with their families. Yes. Because as far as we are concerned, there is no good who's got no family. All of them have got families. Yes. Now, we are working together with DSD, Department of Social Services, to take them back to their families, reunite them with their families. And I am saying that if there are those who might want the municipality to help in skilling them, so that when they come out of this place here, they must have some skill to do some certain jobs so that they can be in a position to get some jobs. There are young people, most of them here, who can still contribute very successfully to the economy of our country. And that's not of the municipality. Thank you.